Hello again, and this is Sergey. In this video, we're going to improve our knowledge of the MBlox software rather than talking about robots. What's going to help us do is write more clean code where we where upon when we move to more complex programs they're going to be easy to write and easy to follow i already plugged in our, our robot and i'm going to go ahead and connect it to m3 and as we did before i go to edit and switch to arduino mode that as a reminder will help me make fewer mistakes i'm going to start a new program I'm going again wait for a few seconds to make sure that I have time to turn my robot on. And then what I'm going to do is set the motor speed to some value. And in this case, it's 100. So if we take a closer look at this code, we see a couple of things. One is that I'm repeating this 100 a couple of times. So what's going to happen if I accidentally select 50? My robot is not going to go forward as expected. So this is where variables come in. Variables are named things, so to speak, that can hold a specific value. For example, a motor speed could be a variable and a value could be 100. Let's see if we can make it work. We're going to call I'm going to click on data and blocks and click make a variable and I'm going to type its name which is speed and I'm going to leave for all sprites um, turned to true. Now as you see it now it's listed here called a speed and I can do a few things to it. I can set the speed to a specific value. I could change speed by some number for example if a speed was 100 and I want to move, move it to 101, I would change the speed by 1. We're not really concerned about show or height variable. So let's start by setting the speed to 100. Now, how do I use the speed in, to set the motor? What I have to do is drag the speed variable, which means I have to click on it. And you see that little shadow appeared under it. Now I move my mouse and I drag the speed until this number 100, which is the placeholder, gets highlighted. I think you see the highlight. Once I see the highlight, I simply let go of my left mouse button and the speed snaps in instead of number 100. I'm going to repeat that again. Press left mouse button and hold. Drag, meaning move your mouse and then drop it on top of 100 as soon as the highlight appears. Here we go. Now, if we want to increase the speed, we can say change the speed by some number, and I'm going to change it by 50. And then I can set the motor again. I'm going to right click and duplicate. And then I'm going to set my speed to a zero and I'm going to duplicate again, and this will stop the motor. I'm going to delete the finer one. Now let's read over it. I'm waiting for three seconds. I'm setting speed to 100, and I'm setting motor M1 and M2 to the speed variable, which is set here to 100. I don't move at certain speed, so I'm going to wait for one second, which means move at the speed 100 for one second. Then I'm going to change the speed to 50, and I'm going to move for one more second. And then I'm going to change the speed to zero. And again, I'm setting the motor speed to that speed variable, which goes from 100 to 50 to a zero. What we should observe is that if we run this program, we're going to pause for three seconds after we flip the switch. Then it's going to go to speed 100, which is about average speed for one second forward. Then I'm going to increase the speed to 150. So you should see a visible speed increase. I'm going to reset the speed again to my newly updated speed variable, which is 150. Finally, 
I will set the speed to zero and by setting the motor, both motor speed to zero, I should observe the motor, the our robot stop. So I'm going to click upload to Arduino. Only going to take a minute as we observed before. And uh, what my goal is here is not to code too much and then troubleshoot a very, very long program. What I want to do is write it in small chunks and observe as I go. That way, if I make a mistake, it's only in the last chunk of code or in set of instructions that I wrote. Now it's done. I'm going to unplug my USB cable, turn it on. I'm not recording it, but you should see the sound that robot makes. Now, and if you were following that, you would see that the robot starts with um, fast speed, but then goes much faster. It didn't stop, however, after I, after I changed the speed to a zero. Why is that? And the typical mistake that I made was that I changed the speed by 100. I didn't change it to some value. So that's the difference between a set and a change. So I'm going to replace my change with my set. So by set, what simply replaces the value 150 with a zero, whereas change adds a zero to 150, essentially leaving it as 150. So now that I did this little task, I should see what my intentions were, which go at average speed for a second, go at a faster speed for another second, and then finally stop. I clicked upload to Arduino, to what's called the compile program, which is convert our code to instructions. I got an error and that's because I forgot to plug in my USB cable back into my robot and reconnect. So if you see the error, typically it's because we forgot to do one of those two things. Plug the robot in or connect it to this M block software. Now it's running again. In this case, it's going to compile first. Then it's going to copy my code. And now uh, I heard my, my robot beep, meaning it's receiving the code. Now the process is done. I'm going to unplug it, set it on the floor, flip the switch, and you could hear the speed. It was slow, then fast, and you could literally hear it, as well as see the robot going slow and then fast. Now let's talk about blocks. And if we look at this code, you see that I keep repeating myself. I keep setting this motor M1 speed to something, M2 speed to something. And it would be nice if I could uh, kind of create what's called a block that contains this code. That way I don't have to repeat myself as much. So I'm going to uh, replace this moving forward instructions with a block and I'm going to call it move forward and I use what's called a camel case which means I'm starting with a small letter and then each word begins with a large letter now my block got dropped in here so I can press my left mouse button and drag it over to the side out of the way now what does my block do it needs to move forward at certain speed so how do, I, how do I define the speed? I'm going to click edit. So I'll just repeat myself. I'm right clicking or clicking on the right mouse button, selecting edit, clicking on options, and I'm adding a number input. What that means is that my block can take a variable. And I'm going to add one, then I'm gonna click in here and call this forward speed. And forward speed will become a variable of my block. Now, what does my block do? It moves, it sets the motor speeds. 
I'm going to duplicate my my set the motor speed instructions both M1 and M2 and instead of using this generic speed thing which I'm going to delete I want to use the variable defining this my move forward block which is called forward speed now what is happening here is my block becomes self-contained in other words everything that it can do is defined within the block now how do i use move forward block instead of set motor speed let me delete the speed out and now i'm dragging from the list of my move forward drag and move forward which is press down left mouse button move my mouse until the highlight appears and you can see this little highlight and then I drop it and it snaps in however my default forward speed becomes one it's just because I define it as a number instead I want to use the speed now I can drag this variable into my move forward block now I can delete all my move set speed and replace them with my move forward now as you can see my program becomes a little bit more compact and it's hard to make a mistake by setting motor one to one speed and motor two to a different speed and again as i'm moving forward i'm going to replace the speed with my speed variable uh, just as easily i could do something like this i could simply say move forward at a speed 100 and I can just delete that so the way I read it is say is is as follows wait for three seconds move forward at the speed 100 this 100 becomes my forward speed right here on this block and I'm setting both motors to forward speed 100 after that I'm going to set the speed I'm changing the speed but that doesn't make much sense anymore uh, instead I'm going to set the speed to 150 or I could just as easily type it in so I'm going to set the speed to 150 then call move forward passing the speed which will be 150 and finally I'm setting the speed to zero and calling move forward again so first of all we've done a lot of work so let's save our project I'm going to call it video 3 dot sb2 now let's upload this to arduino and visually we shouldn't see any difference in other words we wait for three seconds we'll move forward at medium speed for one second then at a faster speed for one more second and then we stop so in other words we didn't change any function functionality contained with our program we simply made this program more consistent and at the same time more readable so let's see if this works and it did exactly what it did before which means we made our program uh, easier to troubleshoot now you can see some other repetitious things for example we wait for one second which means how long do we move forward then we can add that as a second variable to our move forward block and say duration added we're going to add one more numeric input and we're going to call this one duration which means how long do we move forward at the defined speed it's a little harder to see I'm going to move this block in this area a little bit and now I can go to control and I can go to wait and I'm going to wait for a specified duration now our wait is specified in here I'm going to delete that and as you can see my move forward already got updated with a speed of a hundred and duration of one so let, to make sure it works I'm going to change duration here to 3 and now I really don't need the speed variable uh, quite as much anymore but I'm going to keep it 
and I'm going to move at a faster speed for maybe one second. And finally, I want to stop. In this case, uh, I'm going to simply delete that. I'm going to delete that. And to stop, I'm going to simply say, move forward at the speed of zero. And so our main program be just became much more readable, where we say move forward at a speed of 100 for three seconds, set my speed variable within this program to 150, move forward at speed variable, which we just set to 150, for one more second, finally move forward at a speed of zero, which is equivalent to stop. So this becomes much more confusing as I'm reading it, because really I want to stop. So let's make one more block and we're going to call it stop. What do we do in our stop block? We simply set the motor speed to zero. So I'm going to switch to robot tab and I'm going to set M1 to zero, M2 to zero. Go back to data and blocks. I'm going to delete move forward and replace it with a stop. Now, if I read this program, it's so, it makes so much more sense. I say I wait for three seconds, I move forward at the speed of 100 for three seconds. I'm setting my defined speed at 150. I move forward at this predefined speed, in other words, 150, for one more second, and finally I'm stopping. Let's upload this to Arduino. Again, visually, we shouldn't see anything. But if we read this program, it just makes so much more sense. So uh, let's uh, finish this process, finish uploading. And it looks like it's almost done. It just beeped. And finally, upload finish comes in. We can click close, unplug the robot, flip the switch on, and it goes slow for three seconds, faster for one second, and finally stops. Well, this almost concludes our lesson. We talked about variables and we talked about blocks one thing to also remember is that we can define other types of inputs string means simply alphanumeric so essentially anything you can type on the keyboard could be a string input number has to be a number it doesn't have to be one it could be a fraction such as 0 0.5 boolean it's a yes or a no type and yes or a no is essentially a condition that we could test for and these are the types of inputs and also the types of variables that we can define in a program all right so this in this lessons we'll learn how to define variables and also create blocks that take certain inputs and perform certain functions. You can think of it as breaking up this long program into sub-programs, each one containing a set of instructions that serve as typically a singular purpose. And this is how you want to think about programming in general. Define a set of things to do that serve one purpose, and then put them together into much larger program. All right, guys, this concludes our lesson. In the next one, we will likely talk about an inputs, which our robot comes with too, which is infrared or IR remote control and ultrasonic distance sensor. So in the subsequent videos we're going to talk about those and incorporate them into our program see you next time